Good evening, you're watching the news from the South and the Oman Television. First, the headlines. Oman oil June delivery increases by $2, reaching $62.44 per barrel. The Sultanate joins rest of the world, marking World Book Day, emphasizing the importance of reading in intellectual and developmental growth process. And Al Hazam coalition warplanes launch intensive air raids on Houthi's position in Aden, Taiz, and Marib after ground clashes. Good evening once again, and thank you for joining us. Those were the headlines, and now the news in detail. Oman oil June delivery increased by two U.S. dollars, reaching to $62.44 per barrel. Dubai Mercantile Exchange mentioned that Oman oil price witnessed an increase reached two U.S. dollars and 78 cents compared to yesterday's price. It's worth mentioning that the rate of Oman oil May delivery reached 55.9 U.S. dollars, recording a decrease by one dollar and 12 cents compared to April delivery. With the aim to introduce the importance of reading and the importance of book and its role in developing uh, programs, Omani Society for Libraries and Information organized an event to celebrate World Book Day, which falls on 23rd of April. The event aimed to spread reading habit in children's life and aware parents uh, with the importance of the book. During the event, a number of books were distributed for the children in addition to introduce a number of domestic and voluntary initiatives as the initiative of my first book. Highlighting talents and skills of students in various fields and the contribution in preparing students and teachers' personality topped the events which included in 14th Cultural Week in Seoul University College. The Cultural Week including also, included also a number of events and activities, namely specialized work sessions aimed at theatre, plays, poetry, cultural competitions. It also accompanied with the exhibition of fine arts, photography and drawing. In the conclusion, ceremony, a number of inshad shows, public arts, poems and visual show for the activities of the college were presented in addition to owner participated bodies in the events. Enhancing rights of deaf people through following up the application of rights of disabled agreement was the theme of Arab Deaf Week 40 celebration in the Governorate of Alburemi. The celebration witnessed a number of events with wide participation from society members and a number of GCC country citizens. The seminar of Understanding My Right included a number of work papers which focused on the rights of this category in various aspects. The celebrations by citizens on His Majesty Sultan Qaboos's safe return to the homeland continued as member of Al Musuna Club organized a national ceremony where they embodied their love and loyalty for the builder of Omani Renaissance through a number of public arts and poems. It was presided over by His Excellency Sheikh Saad bin Mohammed Al Saadi, Minister of Sports Affairs. As part of efforts to bring e-government and strengthening the benefit of modern technologies in completing transactions and make them easy for investors and entrepreneurs, the Minister of Commerce and Industry commenced receiving requests of businesses' records electronically on the 3rd of May as it mentioned that it will only receive requests for applications electronically. The Ministry confirmed on investors and entrepreneurs the use of the new ID cards which are provided with electronic application system from Royal Oman Police, which give lawful and security framework for applications presented through the Get Invest Easily. You're watching the Sultanate of Oman Television and still to come in our news bulletin. 
The immense task of clearing up is underway after three days of wild weather across Sydney and the surrounding areas. Welcome back to the news from the South Tele of Oman Television. Al Hazm coalition airstrikes hit a camp housing rebel troops in Yemen's third city of Taiz today. After a night of clashes and raids throughout the war, hit country warplanes struck the camp, which was being used by the rebel army unit loyal to ousted President Ali Abdullah Saleh in central Taiz. The main southern city of Aden also came under coalition fire as clashes between supporters of President Abdul Rabbu Mansur Hadi and rebels raged until dawn. Residents in Yemen eastern Ma'rib province also reported overnight air strikes and clashes between local tribesmen and rebel forces Houthis allied with Saleh's loyalist troops. A spokesperson of the charity Save the Children Gemma Parking today said questions remained over Europe's search and rescue missions in the Mediterranean living lives at risk. Four days after up to 900 desperate people drowned uh, trying to reach Europe from Libya, European Union leaders at an emergency summit in Brussels pledged to do more, committing at least nine vessels to monitor the waters for traffickers and intervene in case of need. Other member states from France uh, to Latvia also lined up more ships, planes and helicopters that could be used to rescue migrants. The member state agreed uh, to try to triple funding to 9 million euros a month for the European Union's border operation that patrols the Mediterranean. They also assigned European Union foreign policy chief to line up the diplomatic options that would allow European Union militaries to strike against the boats used by traffickers. Officials said the lack of a strong Libyan government would likely make United Nations backing necessary. In the face of strong competition from China, the traditionally locally produced Palestinian headscarf uh, has put up a show of resistance, successfully pulling itself back from the brink of extinction. Here is a report. In the old city of Jerusalem, tourists strolled for colorful souvenirs to bring home. One item is ubiquitous, the famous patterned black and white headscarf known as the Koufiye, over the years, it's become a worldwide symbol of Palestinian resistance. It may be stylish for some people, but I don't wear it uh, because I, th I think it is stylish. For me, it is kind of a solidarity stand. Most of the kufiyas are produced locally in this textile mill in the West Bank city of Hebron. The Hidbawi factory has been around since 1961 and prides itself for its Made in Palestine stamp. It's endured through conflict, one Palestinian uprising, and the rigors of daily life in the Israeli-occupied territories. But at the start of the last decade, it was forced to fold temporarily in the face of strong competition from China and India, who flooded the market with cheaper counterfeits. We had to close the factory altogether for almost five years. Then we decided to improve the quality of our products so we could compete in terms of quality rather than prices, because in terms of prices, we'll never be able to compete. Each year, the factory sells around 30,000 kufiyas, of which only 2 or 3 percent are sold locally, while the rest go overseas, mainly to Europe. That success can be put down to the influence of one man, Yasser Arafat, the late Palestinian leader and icon of the resistance, who was hardly ever pictured without it. Shop owners in Palestinian territories have since learned to adapt to international demands. Some tourists want to buy cheap souvenirs, so we have cheap kofiyas that we sell for six to seven dollars. And if they want better quality, we also sell kofiyas for nineteen to twenty dollars. 
The traditional black and white kufiye has also gone through a makeover of sorts. These days, it comes in all hues and shades. This eye-catching fabric with its checkered effect has now spread far and wide. A volcano erupted Thursday in Costa Rica, shooting up a column of ash that forced the closure of the airport in the capital city, San Jose. Landing strips were covered with ash. Reports said 14 arriving flights from the United States and countries in Central America were cancelled. The volcano, 3,340 3, meters, 10,960 feet high, erupted in early March and shut down the airport for nearly two days. Turrialba was inactive for 130 years until it came back to life in the 1990s. In late October of last year, it erupted with great force, spewing ash and magma. On April 20, 2010, an explosion and fire on the Deepwater Horizon rig in the Gulf of Mexico started the biggest oil spill in U.S. history. BP recently reported the Gulf is recovering well, but scientists and environmentalists paint a different picture. More details in the following report. Cat Island, five years ago, teeming with birds and thick growth an important rookery for pelicans and shorebirds in coastal Louisiana. Cat Island today, a desert that vanishes under high tide in Barataria Bay. Experts say the heavy coating of oil the island took in 2010 killed the mangroves, which held the island together. When I look at this island, I see two things. The first thing I see is the incredible loss of this particular island, the mangroves, what would have been marsh grass, and the habitat for birds. But the second thing that I see is the imperative that we protect and restore these sorts of habitats because they're essential for a variety of bird populations because they not only provide the optimal habitat for nesting, they provide protection from predators, both natural and man-made. These birds need this sort of isolated barrier island habitat. Mefford and others say hundreds of miles of coast have been similarly affected. For 87 days in 2010, officials tried and repeatedly failed to cap the well that a federal judge ruled this year spewed nearly 3.2 million barrels of oil into the Gulf. Crews skimmed and burned it, sprayed about 1.8 million gallons of dispersants, and crews worked in marshes and beaches to try to remove the oil. But environmentalists say what you can't see may be the worst. Marsh plants take it up, and then the insects that eat marsh plants take it up, and then uh, the birds that eat the insects take it up. And the same thing is happening below the water level, where smaller and smaller organisms are picking it up, and it's being bioaccumulated in some cases. That's actually the most dangerous part of what happens with an oil spill. A just-released National Wildlife Federation report based on the most recent scientific data found that tens of thousands of sea turtles, 12 percent of brown pelicans, and nearly a third of laughing gulls died from the effects of the spill. And the oil is still out there. What I'm holding in my hand is um, a piece of basically a tar mat. And here we are five years later and we still have this material on our beaches. BP says it paid $28 million so far in fines, compensation and cleanup costs and faces up to $13 billion more in the ongoing liability case for the environmental damage. Damage that will affect the region for years to come. From Gulf of Mexico to Australia, crews uh, began the immense task of clearing up after three days of wild weather left four people dead and millions of dollars in damage across Sydney and surrounding areas in Australia. While the low pressure system that caused relentless uh, gale force winds and torrential rain has weakened flood warnings uh, remain in effect for several swollen rivers and 190,000 homes and businesses are still without power, countless trees and power lines were brought down, many crashing houses and cars and a handful of homes were washed away in what was described as one in a decade storm. A total of 132 floods rescuers have been made since Monday. Four people died, including three in the country down or town or country town of Donggong, where floods inundated homes and elderly women drowned when her car was swept away as bystanders watched helplessly.
And now for the general weather focus, clear skies will prevail over the southern with chances of low clouds and fog during late night and early morning on the coast of the Governorate of South Sharqiyya and Al Wusla. Winds will be northeastly light to moderate along the coastal areas of Sea of Oman and it will be northwestly to westerly light to moderate along the rest of the southern. Seas will be slight to moderate along the southeastern coast with a maximum wave height of 1.5 meters while along the rest of the coast it it will be slight with a maximum wave height of one meter. You're watching this alternate of Oman television and now before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Oman oil June delivery increases by $2, reaching $62.44 per barrel. <clears throat> the Sultanate joins rest of the world marking World Book Day, emphasizing the importance of reading and intellectual and developmental growth process. Al-Hazm coalition warplanes launched intensive air raids on Houthi's positions in Aden, Taiz and Ma'rib after ground clashes. With that, we come to an end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.